gonna shake your booties for black girl nerds. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. I was so amused by this show because that's an area of town I know very well. I've spent oh, nice. a lot of time in that area, a lot of <laughs> trips to the Dime and Canners and all these funny uh-huh. places that pop up in the show. Peter, I will start with you. Benny's family is pretty well to do, but he is obsessed with this, this culture and this cloud. I mean, he really doesn't need it. I mean, he's doing well in life. Why is this the pursuit? for him why does he need it so much i think benny needs uh clout and needs to be like on the pulse of what's cool and what's hot um and and he he's just a guy who's like always the first to know about everything that drops what's going on like he has compulsion for it and it's his passion you know like whether he comes from a well-to-do family or not like he loves sneakers. He loves clothes. He loves fashion. Like he lives and breathes that. Um, I don't know anything about that. This shirt is from college. I still wear it. So um, it was nice. Okay, but to that's get sustainable. Lost that's fashion. That's know? it. Hello. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're doing your part for the planet and for that's the it. culture. There I'm, it uh, is. Me and Greta. <laughs> 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 when I think of like the young people now and filmmakers, it is a the industry is getting younger. People have more access to tools to being able to create that weren't available. But for him in particular, it is getting younger. Do you think that filmmakers are now getting as young as as your character Truman? Is that is that the wave now? I think yeah, absolutely. Just because uh, the technology available is becoming so democratized. I think before it was like, if you were going to be a filmmaker at 13, what, did your parents buy you a Super 8? Like, well, how <laughs> how did you afford a Alexa camera? Like, or, you know, like, I, I think um, just because we all have gorgeous cameras in our phones, like if you want to do it, you can't do it. I think that like the film Tangerine is like a perfect example of like, you can make something on an iPhone that is moving and gorgeous. So 100%, especially like, look at a five-year-old with an iPad, like I've, the next Dune will be shot on an iPad. Promise, <laughs> promise. We will I see. I agree. It. Yeah. I remember um, when my young one was very young, her and her cousin were making like stop motion films on an iPad. Right. How did you even do Whoa. that? I don't even understand. But oh, we have an app for that. No, you know, but you know what? I can see how they got it from their mom. You have a very Wes Andersonian setup going right now with the symmetry <laughs> yeah. and everything. I, I see it. I see it. And you're matching with that little like case thing in the back. Like it's the set design is there. I think you're not giving your floating shelves. Yeah, yeah. You really yeah. got it. Oh, I thank you. It's funny. <laughs> I had to minimize it. Someone told me it was too cluttered in the background. I'm like, really? It seems pretty minimal and yeah. say, min- and that's another thing, minimal fashion. So in, in the show, they're on the quest of trying to get <laughs> latrine brand. <laughs> <laughs> that was this wonderful, wonderful writing. Very, very amusing. And just when you see it, you immediately know it. Salute to the brand that, you know, they're making a little fun of very, very funny mm-hmm. stuff. Um, Peter, back to you with, with the culture now, of just how expensive thing, how sustainable is it to have this type of cloud chase? Do you think that we'll ever get to a place where you can have things that are fashionable that people can afford, but still look cool? Is that ever going to be the goal? Because I'm worried about our young people in the show's pursuit of trying to attain all these things and what they might do to get it. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, I think sustainability is definitely something that the fashion industry is taking on as. Um, as something that's important and something that needs to be addressed. Um, in our show, you know, at, at the heart of it is four friends hanging out and really trying to become a crew and, and look out for each other. And all the stuff that we make fun of, you know, we're taking a satirical view at it and poking fun and like, um, you know, like basically showing a mirror on society and what's going on with kids these days and how ridiculous it can get. Um, So I think our show does a really good job of like um, really grounding it in that emotional need of like, Hey, I just need my friends to back me up. 
and my friends to like have my back while all this stuff is going on around around them like this absurd crazy like looking for cloud and how far they'll go to get it Jubika, mm-hmm. when you look at it, you have a front row seat by being in the in, in the industry and see what happens, and you know, being pretty much in trends and 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 what's common. What are when you read through the script and your part in particular? What were some? What was a moment that really made you laugh out loud, and you found to be very very relatable? Wow, um, <clears throat> I feel like there's so many little Truman moments, but. Really, I think at the heart of the character, what I found to be so relatable was like, that was me when I was 12. Like when I was 12, 13, 14, that 100% was me. Like I was so about like this idea of cool and like fashion and trends and stuff. Like I was cycling through every single trend that I could, (laughs) I could uh, scrap together. That was the other thing where it was like, I think another thing that I really related to Truman is like, he's trying to make it happen, like by any means. And he has these huge, like film ambitions, but he's like 13, he's trying to make Mm -hmm. it happen so bad. And I feel like to me at that age, that was like, man, everybody like when I got to high school and like people had Jordans for like every day of the week I was like how am I going to compete with this <laughs> like I, I have to figure out a way to like step it up so I feel like that ambition is really is really like in that folly that's really what I connected to with his character mm-hmm. There, that is a po- that is a, a a true positive side to it Peter that these characters are young but they are ambitious and they have like a a path, even if you don't agree with the path or it's not your path, they seem to be focused very, very mm-hmm. young. Is that, is that fair to say about them? Yeah, absolutely. All four characters are super distinctly focused on their passions. Um, and I think the amalgamation of these four different personalities coming together is what's fun to watch every episode. For sure. Well, I thank you, gentlemen. I was very, very tickled. I'm going to have a good time. I have somebody who used to work at Stussy over there back in the day that I hit <laughs> that this show is yes, going to be coming out. Yes, so, nice. so we are going to have us a good cackle and uh, make it through the episodes. Thank you so much for your okay. time, gentlemen. Yeah, thank All you. All right, Deandra. Bye. Take care. Bye. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.